If you're anything like me, I'm sure you have mixed feelings about springtime. Springtime on the homestead can be really overwhelming, it can get crazy, and so that can be hard sometimes, but on the other hand, I get so tired of winter and I'm ready for the warm weather. I'm ready to be out in the garden, out in the pastures, and one thing that I really love about spring is having my animals out on the pasture. And I'm sure that's something that you love about it too. But I wanna give a warning about moving your animals on the pasture. Because we're more than farmers. Don't do it too soon. Let me repeat that again for the people in the back. Don't move your animals out on the pasture too soon. You want to wait until the grass is growing fast enough that the animals don't just chew it right down to the floor and that will really stunt your grass's growth over the rest of the year. You want to look at the long term when it comes to pasture management. The roots that the grass is growing from stores energy in there. It's pulling up energy and nutrients and stuff from the ground. When an animal takes a bite out of that grass, those roots are using energy to make more grass grow. But if the grass gets eaten off again before it has time to recover from that bite, then it's taking more energy out of those roots. And if it gets eaten again and again and again, then it's really pulling energy from those roots and it's gonna weaken that plant and the grass just won't grow as good. So you're like, but I don't wanna feed any more hay. I know I've already fed so much hay this winter, I wanna get them out on grass so I'm not feeding more hay. But what happens then is if you get them out there too soon, your grass isn't going to grow as well and then you're gonna be feeding more hay starting earlier in the fall. In the long run, that's gonna be worse for your homestead and you're actually gonna be farther behind with grass and hay. So right now, we're actually gonna get Izzy's chickens moved out onto our lawn here. That's where he moves his chicken pen around. This, I'm gonna say, is ready. And whether it was ready or not, we pretty much have to, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. But my cow's pasture is not ready for them to be let out into the pasture and to start the rotational grazing. And we'll go look at that later. But first, let's get Izzy's chickens moved out here. This is where Izzy's chickens have spent the winter. And the reason that we need to get them moved out of here and onto the grass right now is because we need our brooder right here for our broiler chicks that are coming probably tomorrow or the next day. And in here right now is Izzy's pullets that he's raising to replace his hens. They're not ready to be moved out on the grass yet. They're not laying yet so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move Izzy's chickens out of there onto the grass and then move these pullets up into that pen until they're starting to lay eggs and then we'll be able to use our brooder for the broiler chicks that are coming yep we're gonna have to fix up that dolly before we get your chickens moved in here you need to put the wheels down and then get the feeder and water put in here right away so you don't have to go in there once they're in here and then put hay in their nest back there hey cowboy good dog good dog so how does this water thing work, Izzy? Put the water in the bucket, just a bucket, and then we just put nipples on here. Look at the muscles! While Izzy runs to get some hay for his nest boxes back there, I'll show you his little chicken pen here. It is pretty sweet. He can't quite pick it up with the rope and move it himself, so I'm gonna use a dolly and make something for him to move it. I never got around to it last year, so I had to do all the moving, but I want him to be able to do it himself this year. This is his chickens. He makes money from these eggs, so I want him to be able to do it. Those nipple waters work really, really well. We bought those nipples and you just drill a little hole in the side of a bucket and screw them in there. When he's got a nest box in the back there, this thing opens up and right there is the nest. These wheels back here that the coop rides on when you move it are on a lever. So you push it down and flip a little tab and it locks in place. Then you can move it. And once you get it to the next spot, just pop that lever loose again and let it back down so that there's no gap at the bottom. This coop was really simple to build. It was really cheap and it's very, very light. Izzy can't quite move it himself, but he's only nine years old. For any adult, this would be really easy to move. And once I make that dolly for him, he'll be able to move it too. I have a video about how I built this thing and I'll put that at the end of this one so you can click on it and watch that one next. All right, Izzy, let's go get your chickens. Come in there gently. So now that we got his laying hens moved into here, we need to get the pullets out of that brooder there and take them up to that pen. Okay. 
Izzy's chickens are officially our first animals on pasture this spring. Love it. We got them moved in there and the pullets moved out of the brooder up to that pen. And now we've got our brooder so that we're able to get it ready for the broiler chicks that are coming. But that's another story for another time. Let's go ahead and go out to the cow's pasture and talk about grass a little bit. So it does just kind of look like my cows are already out on pasture, but they are not. This is my sacrifice area for the winter. It connects to the barn up there and I don't want them just cooped up in a corral or the barn all winter long. They need space to get fresh air, get out of the winter muck and stuff like that. So in the spring when the grass starts growing, they really start eating it down and it gets eaten down right down to the dirt. And let me tell you, this part of our pasture grows a whole lot more weeds than the rest of the pasture. And that's why it's called a sacrifice area because it's just gonna get a little abused and overused by them being here in the spring and all winter long. It gets trampled a whole lot more. The grass gets eaten down before it's ready, but it's just a small area. And then once that grass over there starts growing more where it can keep up with their eating, then I'll move them into our rotational grazing that we do during the spring and summer. And basically, I've got two separate pastures, one up here, one in the back. They're about the same size, divided into three sections back there, four sections up here, and it's a little bit of a lazy rotational grazing system. I don't have like custom sizes that I do depending on what time of year it is and stuff, but it still works really well. The animals are able to move to different paddocks throughout the summer as they eat the grass down, and then that helps the grass get stronger and grow better because they're fertilizing it and it's not getting overeaten. Like a lot of pastures that I drive by get way overeaten and I always feel bad for them because you get so much more out of it when you do rotational grazing. Good girl, man starting to really shed her winter coat and starting to look a lot better. That mange is going away. I like it. And there is honestly just about nothing prettier than a Guernsey cow out on pasture. This grass over here is really starting to grow. We had a lot of rain last week and then we've got sunshine this week. Supposed to, the sun's supposed to shine all week this week. And it is really starting to grow over here, but it's not up enough that it'll be able to keep up with them eating it down. So I've got to wait a little bit. Let's see what we can do to make so this thing will work for Izzy to move his chicken pen himself. I took one of these and bent it way open and I'm going to attach it on there and attach one of these to the chicken coop and hopefully we'll be able to just hook on and pull it. Okay, let's see if it works. Yeah. How's that? Good. <laughs> it's 5.20 in the morning. The post office just called and said that the chicks are in. Didn't know why I wanted to know this early. So I went to get them, but there's a problem. This first box that I got, they're all dead. Most of them are dead in that box too. So I'm gonna, as quickly as possible, get these that are still alive under a heat lamp, give them some water, some food. Hopefully they'll still make it, but I'm gonna have to contact the hatchery and see what they can do to help us out with this one because that is not good. The other thing is, the count's not right. I don't have enough, not as many as I ordered. So, no, we're gonna have to figure out what's going on here. So I had ordered 120 chicks because I want 60 of them and my friend wants 80 of them. And according to the number that's on these boxes, I got a box of 48 and 48. So that's only 96 chicks, so that's not enough. But out of those 96 chicks, only 17 of them are still alive. And I'm honestly not too hopeful about those either. I mean, they must be pretty worn down if all their buddies are dead. This could really just like mess up our whole timeline and everything. My buddy needed to get them by a certain time so he could get them processed before they go on a trip. 
and I don't want to get them later in the year because it gets hotter. We'll get back to the broiler chicks in a future episode of More Than Farmers, but for now I'll tell you, I was able to contact the hatchery and they are replacing the ones that died. Three more of them that were in the brooder died, so I ended up with 14 of them. And I really didn't want to raise 14 chicks and have them halfway done by the time I would get the replacements because the replacements aren't coming till about the end of May. So I found a friend who wanted those 14, sold them to them, and I had to pay for another 14 to add on to the replacements coming in May. So once that happens, we'll do a video about the broiler chicks then. But for now, there's a lot to learn about having chickens and cows on pasture. So I'll put together some helpful videos in a playlist for you. Put it right here so you can click to watch that next. And it'll start with the video about how I built Izzy's chicken tractor. <laughs> 